Here we are up at the beehives and today I'm going to talk to you about a practice that I've developed that I feel in my opinion can help your bees on those really cold days. So it's January 5th and as you can see we've got a frost on the ground. If we walk down to the bees it's far too cold for them today to be flying. Um, but you just want to, well, I feel like you could give them a little bit of a helping hand. So what I do is I have a couple of paving slabs down there that I've made to the correct width. And what I can do is slide the paving slabs underneath the hive. And we've got a screen bottom board there. Now, what I do with the paving slabs is actually warm them up first on a small camp stove so I mean you can always touch the top of them they're never too hot to touch like the heat on them is absolutely fine so if a bee was to land on one it wouldn't be burnt or anything like that so that warm air then rises up through the screen bottom board and can just help the bees uh, stay a little bit warmer inside the hive it's not really intended to heat them up um, to the point where they're going to come out flying because that would be sort of counterproductive they would end up getting cold as soon as they left the hive so it's more just to give them a bit more energy inside the hive so that they can either move to new uh, new food stores or just to kind of keep the hive in good clean order um, drive any moisture out of the hive and just help the bees overall survive those colder days as you can see this is a waray hive I have the entrance actually fully open at the moment. You can use an a entrance block that reduces the size, but I feel that I don't have any kind of worries about predators going inside the hive. I don't have any problems with mice, so uh, a full entrance in the winter isn't really an issue and it just helps with ventilation. And also if you do get bees dropping down, sometimes with a small entrance like that, if they enough dead bees build up behind the entrance it can actually block the entrance so then you end up with a situation where the bees die because they actually can't leave the hive. I normally keep a entrance feeder in all winter I mean they're not going to take it if it's too cold so it doesn't really do them any harm they've only taken that small amount there in probably the whole of December uh, so they're not really needing a lot of syrup. I'm an advocate the same as barnyard bees for feeding pollen all year. Um, I don't see any reason how it could do any harm to the bees. If they need pollen they'll go and take the pollen. If they don't need pollen they're not going to take the pollen. So anyone who says having pollen in over winter uh, hurts your bees in some way, um, well maybe they could have evidence of that. That would be possibly helpful. It might be that their situation is slightly different than mine but feeding pollen seems to be no problem at all. Now remember this is a really cold day still so ware hives luckily have a very thick insulation um, layer underneath the roof that I will be leaving in place so I won't actually be cooling the hive down by taking the roof off on such a cold day which is quite nice if you need to check on your food stores and things. Okay so as you can see that's like a four inch layer of nice dry straw. Now if we just draw back the straw slightly we will be able to see the feeder. And there it is. Okay, there we go. So let's zoom in down there. You see that is a bowl of Ultra B pollen substitute. And actually below the pollen substitute, first of all I put a uh, layer of granulated sugar and that acts as a kind of moisture wick and then it keeps the pollen dry which is about a two inch thick layer um, in the rapid feeder there. I think that's a three and a half litre rapid feeder. Um, like not very expensive, a couple of pounds. So you could feed pollen very inexpensively and that just sits on top of, uh, well, this quilt layer actually has 
a piece of cloth separating the box and the quilt layer. That piece of cloth is stapled to the bottom of the, the frame here. So it's kind of like a cushion. Um, well, originally when Warre designed, designed this, he called it the coussin. So some people call it the cushion. In England, we call it the quilt, um, just because that was what was used on some British hives before uh, we got the Warre hive. Okay, let's cover that back up with the straw. Um, that just helps prevent condensation forming inside the rapid feeder because obviously if you get condensation forming it will just dribble down uh, into the pollen substitute which would make it all wet and horrible so yeah having the straw on top of the pollen the feeder is a good idea now I do check the straw occasionally because sometimes if it's very high humidity um, outside for a long period of time like a month or so the straw can absorb a lot of moisture and um, it does get a little bit damp so I do change the straw periodically maybe once every two or three months um, and it does just sort of break down as well being that it's an organic material it does just degrade over time so it's not a once a year kind of thing it's something you have to do replenish every so often okay as we can see those paving slabs are starting to warm up a bit. You can hear the water evaporating from the slate between the layers. We'll give it a bit longer. It does take a long time. I mean, it's quite a, a large mass to heat up. But okay, well, I think we've kind of looked under the lid, so we can put that back on. just nestles back over and the overhang is such that the quilt box is completely covered otherwise if the edges of that cloth are exposed uh, water tends to wick along the cloth and can sometimes increase the humidity in the hive so yeah make sure it overhangs that cloth so it's not going to get any water on it okay so Luckily my Ware hive has a couple of windows. It's two boxes during the winter. That's the equivalent of a brood chamber on a Langstroth. Um, so they overwinter in two boxes and then we add identical boxes uh, below the hive in the spring. And we do that uh, so that we can give them more space to build new comb, which is a little bit different than with uh, Langstroth's and national and commercial hives where you add boxes that are slightly shallower to the top of the hive during the year keep whilst keeping the brood chamber the same and then replenishing the brood say every four years or so. With this sort of hive you just add boxes in the spring below the hive and the bees gradually build new comb and move their whole brood chamber down and then in the autumn you can just cut between the layers and just take full boxes of honey off of the top so it's a slightly different way of managing your hives but um, once you get your head around it it's not not that much different uh, okay and it also means you have a continual uh, kind of wax replenishment because you're not reusing the same brood chamber um, for more than about six months or so or 12 months Okay, so we have got a reasonable amount of condensation on the inside of the glass there. Um, so we will hopefully see that that moisture, when we place the paving slabs underneath, will be driven off um, and the bees will actually ventilate that moist, moist air um, out of the front of the hive as they become a bit more active. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, my memory card filled up, so I had to nip home and empty all of the video footage off of my phone. Okay, so we're back up at the allotment. Obviously a bit of time has elapsed. Um, so before I left um, to go and empty my memory card, I 
took the stones off of the camp stove and slid them underneath the hive. Um, The reason I have the uh, bees locked up is because I'm actually on a public allotment site. So anybody could walk up to the bees, including children. So for safety reasons, um, I keep them locked. And it also stops people with slightly worse morals uh, from hurting my bees. So back up with the hive, where were we? We were looking inside the hive and there was a bit of condensation. So before I left, I slid the stones underneath. Let's feel if they're still warm. Uh, not really, I've cooled down now. So it must have been at least an hour or so. Um, there are a few more bees at the entrance. Oh yeah, there's a couple on the feeder, and there's a couple going out flying, so the air temperature has actually warmed up enough for them to fly, so this is kind of the second use of the stones, um, so obviously the first use was what I said about if it's a really cold day, they're not going to be out flying, but you just want to get them moving inside the hive. Um, that's great, but then you can also use it in the winter to kind of, if you know you're going to have a hot day, and the bees are likely to be out flying during the middle of the day, then you can use the hot stones to actually extend um, that day by kind of activating the bees a little bit earlier in the morning than they would naturally uh, warm up, because obviously normally in the winter, the sun doesn't come up until a bit later, and the heat from the sun um, takes longer to kind of go through the wall of the hive and heat up the bees enough that they can then start moving around. So by using the hot stones, you warm the bees in the morning, um, it gets them active, and then it means they can take advantage of the, the short day um, a bit better. They're awake and moving around a bit more. So let's see if the condensation that we saw earlier behind the window um, has disappeared since we had the hot stones in for the last sort of hour or so. Hey, look at that, that is crystal clear, which is quite amazing, I think, and will probably help the bees deal with the cold a bit better. The other thing that I feel, I don't have any evidence of this, but I think it's sort of basic physics, um, the heat that rises into the beehive will be absorbed by the honey um, within the cells of the wax, the honeycomb. So that warmth will then kind of act as a storage heater within the honey so that they can then kind of stay warm all night long and then in the next morning if it's still cold you can do the hot stones again and you kind of just build up a little heat store within the honeycomb. As you can see the bees are quite mobile so that means there must be enough warmth inside the hive. They all look healthy. These bees were treated with formic acid in the autumn and oxalic acid in uh, the time between Christmas and New Year. Um, so they should be under no pressure from a heavy mite load. Um, as you can see, we've got a good amount of honey stored there. So that is kind of my little um, beekeeping practical tip for giving your bees a kind of jump start on those sunny days in the winter and maybe help them on those colder days where they aren't getting out of the hive and they're finding it difficult to move around inside the hive. There we go. Thanks for watching.